I've been given one of these light curtains to fix. It's got an issue where it doesn't turn off properly. Should be a simple fix, but I thought I'll just do a little video on it. If not from the elite, it's a red pole, which is a sensor. There's also a black pole, which is just a whole bunch of infrared emitters. And these are infrared sensors. What happens, down here we've got a switch. That's currently off. And up here we have a indicator to say what the power status is and whether it's sensing a signal and that sort of stuff. So I'll turn the switch on. There you go. So you go, that's red, which means it's got power, but it's got no signal from another pole, which is normal in this situation. Now I'll turn it off. It's gone off this time. Typical. Here we go. Now it's off and it's stayed on. Well, the actual switch itself must be sticking. There we go. It's now, now it's staying on the whole time. Now it's gone off. So this is playing up, so I need to pull this apart and replace that switch. So the easiest way to get into these is actually take the top cap off. This is where the red cap normally is. You put this off. Then you've got a top cap here. Take this off. Then you take these screws out the back. And then you can slide the whole circuit board out the top. It's easier to take it at the top than it is to take it at the bottom. So sort of screws out, let's slide the assembly out. Be careful not to snag it on the LED holders and the actual LEDs and stuff like that. There we go. Here's the board. So I'm going to inspect this whole board, check all the solder joints out and that sort of stuff. Make sure they look okay. This could be over once over, make sure it's you know basically alright as well in case any other things going on. But there is the reed switch right there. Alright, so there's the reed switch. Here's some replacements I'll have in stock. Let's pop this reed switch out and put a new one in. Which replaced. That should probably work now. It's my belief that fixing this by swapping this reed switch out would fix a problem. That hasn't panned out. I put a different switch in, it's still sticking. Put another switch in, different type, still sticking. Got another type that was also sticking. So it's like, okay, there's obviously some kind of fundamental problem here. Something is causing this to happen. So I thought I'd investigate a bit more. As you can see, I've got my oscilloscope hooked up here and also got a current probe hooked up here. So what I'm looking at here is inrush current. Reason being that for a reed switch to stick it either has to be a continuous magnetic field of some kind just enough to hold it in place so it doesn't release. It can be much less than the initial you know, magnetic field to make it trigger in the first place or it's basically welding the contact shut from an inrush current or something like that. So that's what I'm checking for is inrush current. This whole light assembly is in three sections and they plug in together. So I've got the whole thing intact right now, but I have actually had it sticking with just one segment in, which is basically what you can see here. It's just this infrared modules and a little bit of power supply stuff. Right. There's actually not much on here, it only draws very little current, but that is still making it stick, even without all the other stuff plugged in. So right now it's all connected together it's just as it would normally would be. So let's have a look at the scope and see what we're getting. So I've done a single capture on this. And the time base is currently 200 milliseconds per division, so it's showing quite a long time base there, so, you know, a couple of seconds there, right? Just to see what's going on when it's powering up. And you can see this big dip here, initial current drop. All right, let's do a capture. I'll do that basically by getting the magnet, which is this ring here, and putting it by the reed switch to turn it on. So this is what we're getting here. There's this big current drop. So this is set at 50 milliamps per division, so it's only like. I don't know, 75 milliamps or so here at this last point. But then you look, you've got a whole bunch of noise over here. Let's get closer to that. Let's zoom on that. And here's this big noise right here. That's still that 50 milliamps per division. So that's down three divisions here. You see it comes right down, way below what I'm measuring. It's going way out of range. So that's actually quite a massive amplitude that we're on here. So I might need to change my scaling in order to get this. So there you go, I've now had to rescale this by quite a bit. It's now 200 milliamps per division. So it's 200 milliamps, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, nearly 1400. So over here we've got display amplitude, 1.29 amps. 
inrush when it first turns on. Now these reed relays are rated at 500 milliamps, so that's quite an inrush going on there. I mean, obviously it doesn't use that much power normally when it's actually running. Um, and we also have some ringing here too. Let's expand this out a bit more. A bit of ringing going on here and in here. This is ringing in here too, which is also massive spikes and stuff. So let's go down even quicker. See this dips right down, goes off screen still. You know, so this is massive ringing. Yeah, so it's not surprising really that it's basically latching up. Now, if I actually do the same tests, so I'll do the same tests with only one of the boards. And I'll show you that. I've got to get this into relatch itself first. Right, let's re-trigger this. This is with the single board. So it, with all the boards connected, my power supply is showing about 39 milliamps. With only a single board, it's showing about 10 milliamps. And you can see here, this is looking a lot tidier. Let's get a bit closer. And here you can see that ringing as the relay. Obviously, the reed relay's got a bit of um, contact bounce, stuff like that. And that's showing up here. But that is still showing as excess of 1.4 amps, even with just a single ball connected up. So that's quite an inrush. So I need to do something about the inrush, I think. And if I can fix the inrush current, then that should stop the switch sticking. But why is it this particular light pole has got this problem? I don't know. It's a bit suspicious. There's not much on this ball to actually go wrong to draw that much current. I mean, there's a, a single tantalum capacitor on there. It could be that. I've already checked a few bits and pieces around, and I can't find any actual faults, so it's interesting. So what I've done is I've installed a 10 ohm resistor in series with the reed switch to help to reduce the inrush current. And we'll have another look at this and see what's changed. Now this is still only doing a single board, it's not doing the whole three circuit boards, so it should be a reduced current compared to what it should be running on. But we have to start somewhere, so we'll just compare this one. So let's trigger that. There we go. So the voltage is still looking okay, that's not really dropped down too much. That's looking alright. I did actually do a longer term capture as well for like a couple of seconds to check the start of the whole thing but it seemed fine but I'll see what it's actually like when I do the microprocessor end of it as well. So you can see the current spikes down and comes up. Zoom out some more, 500 nanoseconds for division, there we go. You can see it really well just here. Nice, that's what it's doing now is this. So that's still 740 milliamps. So it's definitely at least halved it. It was excessive 1.4 amps before. So it's made a huge difference straight away. It might be right, I mean this relay is rated at half an amp. I mean you expect some kind of inrush and stuff to be capability, but right now it's not latching anymore. With that resistor in there, that stopped that fault from happening where it's latching up. So I can keep triggering it and it's going off and on, off and on, off and on just fine. So that kind of confirms that it is an inrush current problem. We'll put the rest of the boards on, we'll see what we get. So I've got all the boards connected together. I've changed the time base to be one millisecond per division to capture as much as we can, well, as much as we need to. Let's trigger it. So again, it's like 39 milliamps coming out of my power supply. And that turned back off again just fine. I might just re-trigger it a couple more times just to make sure it does indeed turn off. It does, no problem at all. You can see you've got some wobbling here in the voltage, but this is like the main supply rail and it's gonna get dropped down to, I think it's 3.3 volts and five volts, something like that, on the actual boards themselves, so. That's fine, it doesn't really matter, it's got a big window there of, of usability, so I'm not worried about that. So let's have a closer look at this. It's looking very messy just here. So the voltage has dropped down to what we've got, uh, 2 volts of the vision. So that's like 5 volts here at the minimum, with the highest current. I don't know what's going on there. That's interesting actually. Let's look at what we get down to. Yep, yeah. okay, maximum is 800 milliamps. So it's still exceeding the switch rating. So, I mean, it's not ideal having current going through a re-switch, really. I mean, I shouldn't really be passing current through re-switches. should be using the re-switch to switch a transistor or a MOSFET or something. But that's not what they're doing. That's not the design. So it's interesting where the current goes to nothing and then comes back. And the voltage drops. So maybe it's because the voltage is dropping, the current is then dropping off. So it's shutting back off again, maybe. So I'm wondering if that 10 ohms is maybe a little bit big. I might drop it down slightly. And the voltage here will set... Um, one, two, three, almost four divisions, so that's like eight volts here, which is what I'm putting in. I'm putting eight volts in. This thing runs off nine volts, runs off six AA batteries. Nine volts would be like the typical normal voltage, but obviously that will drop down to six volts or so maybe before the thing will cut off. 
and that's regulated down to 5 volts or 3.3 volts, something like that. So at least it's not latching that switch up anymore. So I've settled on using a 4.6 ohm resistor here. I realised I was making a mistake before I actually had the scope probe before the resistor, not after it. So anyway, this is what we're getting now. So let's just have a look at this, a 1 millisecond division. Let's bring it down a bit more. And we see it does have quite a big dip here with the current draw. But that's only on startup, and this is 100 microseconds per division right now, so that's fine. And we've still got this big current dip here. So we're down here. So that's still staying 1.25 amps, and that's the whole light bar with um, a 4.6 ohm resistor in series. Obviously this is off a power supply anyway, which can provide more current than the batteries will do. So the batteries have obviously got some internal resistance as well, which will probably help slightly with this issue. Maybe part of the problem is that these batteries are just too damn good. I mean, these are the batteries that's in it. Panasonic alkalines. Maybe the battery's got too little internal resistance, so that's been adding to this problem. We shall see what happens. This seems to be working fine. I'm happy with these rates of increase here. Voltage is stabilising alright. Let's go longer. Let's do a longer capture, shall we? And we'll see what happens with that. There you go, it's a full startup sequence. So you can see, once it's actually done its boot up, it's absolutely fine. The voltage is up there, not an issue, and the current is also more reasonable as well. So I'm not worried about this part. So here's what I've done, as you can see just here. Interesting problem, surprising problem. So there's the replacement switch. Here's the original one. So you found it interesting, don't forget to click like and subscribe. This is why any rush currents are things which you need to consider. This design, not ideal, a re-switch for this in rush current on these. I mean, if I had smaller capacitors on these regulators, maybe it'd be all right. You know, that may be a solution is to change these tantalums to a smaller value or something like that, because it is battery powered. So the supply coming in should be pretty good anyway. So obviously you need to stop noise on the rails from these actual devices that are sitting on the rails. And I'd be inclined to stick a whole bunch of ceramic caps across them instead. Instead of big tantalums, you know. It is what it is. It's the first time I found one of these poles which does this particular symptom. It is a bit weird in a way. Putting a resistor in fixes it, so let's solve. Click like, subscribe. Oh, check the playlist out. I've got a playlist down here. Playlist over there. Scope link over here. And a Patreon support link over there. Bye.